today we're going to be fishing just kind of off of this little island over here. I'll have to see what island that says it is again. I had it memorized for the video, but yay. Anyway, there's a submerged railroad tracks out here that go basically right along there. And I'm still probably yards away, like 40 yards. But I wanted to start drilling the ice and see how we were sitting for thickness. And we are just going to go ahead and ride this spot out for a little bit because why not? We're just chilling. 11 mile. Got three good cut bows yesterday. Caught a total of six. Kept three. And today we're going to try and duplicate. Hopefully we have a uh, smoked trout for Christmas for the whole family this year that uh, we don't have to purchase from a store. Haha. <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right. This is Captain Off. Out. Yeah, buddy. Nine something in the morning. Fished on. Yeah, boy. All right. So the ice is making some noise. And let's make a video about when ice makes a lot of noise, if it's windy, attribute most of your concern to the wind. Uh, if you got seven inches of ice and it looks like that, Pretty good, pretty good. Um, one thing that you can do is just try and avoid going over by areas where the ice is breaking up and also stay away from pressure ridges. But more so just look for a patch of black ice and then go straight to the middle of it and set up shop. And you can see how I did that. And there's some noise on all these snow coverings because what happens is that there's a shadow behind it at a certain hour of the day and it actually causes melting and thawing so you'd be surprised how often it's like i don't know places that you think you could walk more safely are actually not as good but when you hit it with a spud bar that's that big um what I like to do actually is hit it and hope for about six good hits before going through, really. But even at about three or four good whacks, like good ones, normally I can get the very bottom of the ice to fracture at least. And that'll kind of tell me, you know, how much pressure it takes to break the ice and how thick the ice actually is, because you can see the split at the bottom. I mean, you hear that, and I do have a heater going, but Here's the thing, there's a lot of wind, and the pressure ridge is over there. And there is one behind me, but not really that concerned. Check out the back view out of the castle. Yes. So, I mean, there's no breakup over here. There's really nothing going on. So keep fishing like I say if it's seven inches or if you're in seven feet of water you're gonna hear a lot of popping <laughs> or if there's wind but yep that's that one that I just put the uh, swivel on it and hooked it directly to the lure with what that lure has on it is a split ring. So you see how much... How much action you get out of that? That's why I say, depending on how you fix your things together, you're going to have a lot of success. This is a great one for playing. See how active these fish are.
just smacking up dirt. Great way to call fish. Okay. Here we are at 11 mile. This is like part four of the series now. And Northland Tackle. That one, that wind's right there, tied on. Didn't even know what hit him. Good, good fish right there, buddy. Damn. Oh, yeah. Got the live well action. So there's one to make up for the jaw jacker loss earlier. I got one on the jaw jacker earlier and it was running. There we go. What's up, doggo? How you doing in there, puppy? Heck yeah. 